Hello, everyone, and welcome to the webcast. My name is Christine Dursey Davis. I am the executive director of the Ohio chapter of the American Planning Association, and I am chair of APA's New Urbanism Division, and I am your webcast moderator. Today is Friday, May 3rd, and we will be hearing the presentation Leading Edge Practices for Regional and Local Freight Plans. For technical help during today's webcast, you can type your questions in the chat box found in your webcast toolbar, or you can call the 1-800 number shown on your screen. For your content questions related to the presentation, again, type those in that chat box located in your webinar toolbar. We will answer those at the end of the presentation during the Q&A. I ask that if your question is for a particular panelist, you please state who you would like to answer the question when you type your question into the box. On your screen is a list, very small list, <laughs> because I can't seem to figure out how to enlarge the size of it, of all of the participating chapters and divisions for 2019. Thanks to all these chapters and divisions for making these webcasts possible and free to their members. In particular, today's webcast is sponsored by the Transportation Planning Division of APA. So thanks to them for sponsoring and coordinating today's session. Our upcoming webcast is blank right now because I'm in the middle of updating them. Our summer schedule is starting to fill up, which is great. Uh, you'll be able to get a complete list, the latest and greatest, at ohioplanning.org slash planning webcast. Today's webcast has been approved for 1.5 CM credits for live viewing only. We do have some recorded webcasts that are available. You can check out our webcast webpage, ohioplanning.org slash planning webcast for a list of those distance education on-demand sessions that are available. We have one for law, 1.5 credits, and 1.5 for ethics right now. To log today's credits, just head over to planning.org, log in your My APA account, and then under the search for CM activities, just type in the event number or the title of today's webcast, both of which can be found on our webcast webpage. Like us on Facebook, Planning Webcast Series, to receive up-to-date information on our sessions. We are recording today's webcast. It will be available on our YouTube channel. Just search Planning Webcast on YouTube, and we'll pop up along with our over 250, almost 300 webcasts that we have available for viewing. And we'll also have a PDF of this presentation available on our webcast webpage at the conclusion of today's session. So that's it for my intro. Uh, I am now going to turn it over to Roger Schiller, who's gonna get us started. He's gonna do some introductions and I'm turning it over to you, Roger. And don't forget to unmute yourself. Right. Um... I'm not seeing the uh, the thing to sh share my screen. You may have to minimize the presentation. It might be behind the the button might be behind it. Mm -hmm. I minimized everything. I'm still not seeing it. Hmm. Okay, hold on one second. Let me try again. Oh, there oh, it goes. There it is. <laughs> it we found you. Yeah. Anyway, thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you, Christine. Again, uh, this is Roger Schiller, and uh, uh, I guess we'll just go ahead and, and jump in here for leading edge practices for regional and local freight plans. In terms of agenda, uh, we'll do some quick speaker self-introductions for, for the CDM Smith team. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about the purpose and the outcomes of the webinar, what we hope to get out of it. Uh, we're going to provide a brief overview of the projects that we're going to highlight, highlight in this uh, uh, webinar, which are the Will County Community Freight uh, Friendly Freight Mobility Plan, the, uh, the, the Jorts Regional Freight Mobility Plan in Southeast Texas, and the Greater Charlotte, North Carolina Regional Freight Mobility Plan. And then we're going to synthesize all that into um, uh, 
best practices for, for regional freight planning efforts, in, including how to use diff different sources of freight data, uh, methods for community environmentally friendly freight planning, how to integrate land use uh, into the process, and project selection and funding, as well as uh, uh, freight workforce development strategies. So with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to Jackie Murdoch uh, for her introduction. Good afternoon. I'm uh, Jackie Murdoch with CDM Smith. Um, I'm a transportation planner here. I also worked for the MPO in the Chicago region as well, doing a myriad of uh, transportation and freight planning. Um, here at CDM Smith, I've done a variety of regional and local freight plans, um, anything from long range planning, county, county and urban uh, freight area plans, and also focusing on you know, performance based planning and project evaluation and prioritization processes. Okay, now, now over to you, Chris. Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are today. Uh, my name is Chris Nazar, and I serve as the technical delivery manager for our West Transportation region at CDM Smith. I've been with the firm 18 years. Um, I've been fortunate to work on a very diverse set of planning practices, um, including a lot of major corridor plans, uh, environmental impact statements, uh, different long-range transportation plans for uh, states and for MPOs and for regions, and then uh, several freight and rail plans. Uh, and I have a master's degree from the University of Toronto. Thank you, Chris. And again, my name is Roger Schiller. I'm a planner here at CDM Smith. I've uh, been here about two and a half years now, but I've got 12 years of experience, uh, mostly in, in freight transportation planning, but also general general planning. Um, done a lot of state and regional freight plans, um, as well as freight technology planning and deployment testing, uh, economic analysis of uh, commodity flow and goods movement, um, and, and uh, corridor transportation planning. And I have a master's in urban planning from Florida State University. So the purpose and outcomes of, uh, of the webinar today, we're, like I said, we're going to introduce these uh, regional and local freight planning projects, which I mentioned, and each one of them had some unique challenges. And we're, we want to focus on what those challenges were, talk about them a little bit, and, and also how we solve them, you know, more importantly, how we solve them. And then, like I said, just synthesize the best practices for uh, freight transportation planning for you know, future applications. Uh, so I'm going to turn it over to, to Chris to talk, talk about the Will County project. So I'm going to begin by introducing the Will County Community Friendly Freight Mobility Plan. This is a plan that our team completed um, a little more than a year ago. Uh, Will County is located south of Chicago. Uh, Juliet is the largest city in the county. And this was a great partnership. We worked with a group of agencies led by Will County, but also including Economic Development and the Workforce Investment Board and several freight stakeholders to develop the plan. Will County has been the site of massive freight growth due to, due to its strategic location south of Chicago, the interstates, that are provided there along with significant rail access. And as a result, this has included a lot of expansion of major multiple uh, intermodal facilities, as well as warehouse complexes, including Amazon and Ikea. Now, historically, Will County's economic base was agriculture driven. And now the county is addressing both the benefits and the conflicts among freight related industries, local communities, and that agricultural history. Will County is critical for regional and national freight. You can see the graphic on the screen. Will County, if you look at the numbers, is the largest inland port in North America in terms of the freight that moves through it. Um, you know, 623 billion in freight value at the time of our plan, which is equivalent of 97% of the gross regional product in the Chicago region, 80% for the state of Illinois, and 3.5% of the US gross domestic product moving through the county every year. And so they needed um, a significant comprehensive freight plan and we developed this comprehensive freight plan with the county and its partners. 
Next slide. Some of the key challenges with the Will County Freight Plan was the need to tell the complete and current freight story to build support for funding at all levels. Um, the growth within the county was so significant in terms of freight facilities and new businesses related to freight that two-year-old data was out of date largely out of date. You couldn't even really make decisions. So we had to work with data sets to bring them up to as current as we possibly could. We had to balance the freight growth and tools for handling freight growth and telling the story of the growth of freight with community and environmental impacts, some of the negative externalities which come with that level of freight transportation. We did a strategic prioritization of projects and uniquely, workforce development, and we'll talk about this a little further, was a key part of this plan. How do we increase the local job benefits to the community? And so we told stories like the one you see on the screen about the total economic impact of freight activity in Will County. And it transcends the nation, 106,000 jobs, the significant direct gross regional product developed and all the taxes that are yielded to uh, local state and federal coffers from all of this activity as part of the case for why investment from all levels of government was needed. Roger. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Um, so the uh, the Jorts Regional Freight Mobility Plan um, is in Southeast Texas and Jorts stands for Jefferson Orange Hardin Regional Transportation Study. So it's, it's basically the Beaumont, Port Arthur uh, uh, metropolitan area, uh, maybe 90 miles east of Houston, Houston on I-10 uh, along the Louisiana border. And it is a major uh, oil and gas refining hub with a lot of related petrochemical and plastics and uh, rubber manufacturing and things like that. It's a very industrial or industrial oriented economy. Uh, it's quickly becoming a key export point for uh, domestically produced uh, crude oil and, and natural gas, coming mostly coming from the Permian Basin. Uh, and it's also a big uh, military uh, outload port. Uh, the port of Beaumont is the, the biggest military port in the nation right now. So some of the, the key challenges that we uh, had with this, this particular plan were we're looking at, at all the different freight data sources that are out there from multiple sources to try and assemble the best story for this, this particular region, which is very much reliant on the waterborne and pipeline modes, uh, which, which is sort of atypical for a, uh, you know, for a region. Most, most regions, the regions rely much more on trucking and rail for their freight flows. Uh, the Beaumont area is a little bit different just because of all the petrochemical manufacturing that's going on there. Um, this required us to look at a, a multiple different data sets to assemble a comprehensive picture of what the regional freight flows looked like in this area. And then we linked those flows to you know, regional economic uh, and employment and economic output models with an econometric model, basically an in-plan uh, model to estimate the impact of the uh, this petrochemical supply chain um, on the region and the rest of the country. And the results of this exercise for just one industry, which is petroleum refining, are shown in the graphic on the right. Uh, basically, refined petroleum products represent 36% of the total regional output for the, uh, the Beaumont and Port Arthur MSA. And virtually all of it is exported outside of the region, uh, most mostly to the rest of the United States. Here, it's about 21.1 billion in, in 2016. Um, also, after Hurricane Harvey dropped about 55 inches of rain on the area and caused massive flooding, uh, environmental and, and economic resiliency was also a key consideration for this plan. And uh, we'll, we'll get a little bit more into that um, as we go along. Jackie. Yeah, and I'll be introducing the Greater Charlotte Regional Freight Mobility Plan. Um, and this is really a, a landmark effort led by um, the um, uh, Central Line Council of Governments in collaboration with a variety of 
partners. Uh, that's really a multi-jurisdictional and, and public-private collaboration across 14 counties and two states uh, that we collaborated with FHWA, the U.S. Department of Commerce and Economic Development Administration, uh, both the North Carolina and South Carolina DOTs, local governments, economic development organizations, and pretty strong uh, representation on the private rail and trucking companies and logistics and distribution firms. So their uh, collaboration and input into the planning process was really um, a landmark effort to driving towards uh, the implementation and um, of the of the planning outcomes here. Um, and the planning process was really in three main steps. The first component um, was highly analytical and data-driven, um, took you know taking course uh, over the 12-month uh, plan horizon for the freight plan development process. Um, a lot of data collection that we'll get into uh, later on in the process, and just innovative ways to combine different. Uh, data sets to tell a compelling story on what was happening in the greater Charlotte region. Um, the second phase was focused on um, stakeholder and public outreach. And uh, this was really, um, again, a sort of landmark effort uh, that was um, undergone by the greater Charlotte region. Um, and it was cr critical to incorporate some of the non-data driven issues into the data analysis that was conducted during the first phase of the work. And it incorporated everything really from policies that support freight mobility and improvement to the experiences of truck drivers on the area roadways and concerns from the railroads about safety and capacity. Um, and then resulting in obviously the final uh, products from performance measures that were, was driving the performance evaluation of projects and plan performance, uh, recommending best practices in freight planning and, and uh, next steps for implementation of the plan. Um, Again, this was really representing a comprehensive and collaborative planning effort uh, meant to strengthen the connections between the region's key freight transportation assets, their core industries, and land use development. And we'll get into some of those land use components later. Next slide. So some of the key impetus for uh, the Greater Charlotte Regional Freight Mobility Plan was to identify ways to effectively and consistently reduce freight congestion and bottlenecks, um, to identify connections between freight mobility and regional economic goals. Um, again, one of the uh, key components here was identifying areas for economic growth, these clusters of um, freight supportive land uses, and identify how freight movement can move more efficiently. Um, throughout the region, um, prioritizing project programs and policies um, to improve safety and efficiency of the freight system, and promoting effective land use to support that freight mobility and, and business development and job growth. And finally, to uh, mitigate environmental impacts of freight movement um, as, as there was an increase in, in truck traffic along some of these key corridors. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about. Uh, I'm going to lead the innovative use of, of data portion for this um, for this presentation. Um, so one of the thing, thing, things that we had to do do with really all these plans was to combine a bunch of different freight data sets to tell, tell a coherent story about uh, uh, freight flows in each one of these regions. Um, each freight data source has its own strengths and weaknesses, as well as differences in things like geographic coverage. Uh, commodity detail and coding conventions, as well as the availability of forecasts. So for the for the Jorts Regional Freight Plan, we relied on the, the Corps of Engineers waterborne statistics for the marine mode, uh, since it's regarded as the authoritative source for that uh, particular mode, and it was such an important mode for this region. Uh, we also used the FHWA freight analysis framework for, for pipeline flows. Those two sources were, were sup supplementing the TransSearch database which has excellent coverage of the truck and rail modes, but not so much of the maritime and pipeline modes. So this really enabled us to assemble a more complete picture of the regional commodity base, as well as the importance of each mode uh, with, within that. And as I mentioned, we, we plugged the, uh, the commodity data into this in-plan um, economic model to get a sense of the impacts uh, of these, uh, these uh, flows on the region, as well as the rest of the country. And then in Will County, we also use TransSearch as the baseline data source uh, and to model the economic impacts, but, but we supplemented it with uh, truck GPS ping data from the American Transportation Research Institute, uh, as well as MPO freight data. And another unique thing that we did in Will County was to collect freight land development data from MC and CoStar 
and this was used to estimate and map uh, current and future freight intensive development patterns. And we'll, we'll go into a little more detail about that later in the presentation. And then finally, also in Will County, we used surveys to validate and augment all these data sources. Uh, uh, the, the surveys included outreach to workforce agencies in the region, freight owners, uh, as well as truck drivers, where we left maps in the uh, in the driver break rooms, and they could, could uh, attach stickers to the maps and, and note, you know, kind of notate what what their big pain points were. So. The whole, the whole reason you want to collect and analyze all these different data sources so that you can tell the story of freight in your region. In, in Will County, it was mostly about just the sheer magnitude of the cargo moving through the region, as well as the rapid rate of development and the workforce growth that had to be accommodated uh, as part of the plan. Um, it was also about in Will County looking at the, you know, these, clo these global uh, economic trends that are driving freight freight flows in Will County. So it's, it's really a, you know, a global um, driving force, but with an intense local impact in one, in one county. And stakeholder input was also critical for really all three of these plans, but especially in Will County, because there were so many, uh, just because of the sheer volume of the freight and the, some of the negative impacts it was having. Um, in Southeast Texas, uh, it turned out to really all be all about the oil supply chain and the impact of that particular industry on the region. Um, it, it's, a, it's a very industrial economy. Uh, it's where the first oil strike was. The biggest, some of the biggest refineries in the nation are located in, in the area. So it is their economic base and we really wanted to communicate that as part of our plan. Uh, and then in Charlotte, uh, there was a lot of outreach uh, effort for that plan. and. So it's about breaking down the, uh, the the really complex freight flow data um, into an, appro in an approachable and understandable way, and then connecting it to the land use and the economic impacts. So one of the things in, that we did in the Jorts region is uh, we looked at the impact of these key industries and, and commodity flows on, on the workforce, as well as economic output and uh, the, the pie chart on the left basically shows the regional employment base by industry. And you can see that the uh, petroleum and coal products manufacturing and chemical manufacturing only make up 5% of the employment base. But when you break it down by, by um, economic output, they, uh, they, they make up nearly 60% of the, the region's economic output just for those two industries. And, and then if you look at the, you know, the other, the other goods dependent industries in the region, which includes things like, you know, just manufacturing, the transportation and warehousing sector and other goods industries, everything except for services, those industri industries make up 80% of the economic base for, for this region. So it's clearly a freight dependent economy. Um, those two industries, just the petroleum and uh, chemical manufacturing comprise 18% of the regional labor income which shows that they pay much better than average. And it also reflects the capital intensive nature um, of those particular businesses and the high yield production technologies that they use. Um, another way that you, you can use data is to just, like I said, tell the story of the region. So in this, this graphic from the Charlotte freight plan just shows how you can dissect all this complex freight information and make it approachable and understandable for stakeholders. So, you know, someone glancing at this could easily see that trucks carry most of the freight in the Charlotte region, 77% by weight, uh, and that the local interstates are the critical truck freight corridors. Uh, similarly, rail is, is important for basic commodities like cereal grains, which were the number one commodity moved by rail, and uh, air cargo, cargo you know, not surprisingly handles the high value and time sensitive freight. So um, again, in, in Will County, we uh, focused, focused on communication with elected officials um, at all levels of the local government, um, which could support funding decisions. And we did this through, through really uh, you know, simple, approachable, and easily understandable executive summaries, one-page fact sheets, and, and infographic style deliverables that, that made these concepts um, you know, readily, readily understandable by a lay audience. Uh, and again, in Greater Charlotte, is breaking down the freight by the numbers. What are the key freight movement uh, uh, and, and supply chains that are, are industries being supplied, and how are they connecting to the uh, commodities and the key supply chains in the region? Uh, Jackie, did you have anything uh, to, to add to the, the Charlotte points? 
Yeah, you know, I think again, for, um, you know, similar to Will County, the Greater Charlotte Regional Freight Mobility Plan also, you know, had a lot of data, right? Data, data everywhere, but it was really about how you're communicating and consolidating that data to tell a compelling story about what are the key freight movements in, in, and within the region, what are those key commodities and how is that supporting key um, manufacturing and job growth within the region um, and making that connection between, you know, just what's moving on truck, rail, air, water to how that's supporting local and regional economic development um, was, uh, you know, a key focus of the plan and one of the outcomes that they um, are moving forward with implementing solutions around. So in, in summary, um, it's important to evaluate all these different freight data sources against the regional economic and freight context uh, for your particular area. In other words, which data sources are best for the key freight modes in your area and how can you communicate um, uh, that information to, to non-technical audiences. Um, similarly, like I mentioned, each data set has its own strengths and weaknesses. Uh, like the, you know, the freight analysis framework is freely available through FHWA. Um, and includes international origin de and destinations, but it can't identify through movements. And, and those are really important for a lot of regions, including Will County. Um, similarly, you, know, you, have to, you have to pay for the TransSearch database and have great geographic detail, uh, but it has some limitations when it comes to non-North American freight. And uh, like I said, the Corps of Engineers waterborne flows are, are great for, for the marine mode, but it is limited to that mode uh, and it does not offer any forecast information. So it's just about looking at a, looking at all these different data sources and assembling the one that tells the best story about your particular region. Um, similarly, linking the commodity flows to regional and national economic activity, uh, including jobs, regional value added, as well as economic output, makes the freight movements relatable to stakeholders and, and kind of highlights the importance of the region to the, to the larger geographies, including state and national economies. And this really helps tell the story of the importance of goods movement and, and helps to make the ca uh, case for, for investment. So with that, I'm going to pass it over to Chris, and he's going to talk about community and environmentally friendly freight planning. So one of the key synthesis areas that we identified in looking at best practices for freight planning was how to integrate community friendly and environmental supportive elements. It's important that plans balance all of the benefits of freight with the potential impacts. Next slide. For Will County, that meant, as with most plans, that it was first important to identify the key community and environmental issues. And these included conflicts between land use and, and freight in neighborhoods and in communities and with different types of sensitive land uses. Uh, addressing the agricultural original base of the county and conflicts of that with freight expansion, significant visual and noise issues, particularly as you get nearer to intermodal facilities or major freight distribution centers. And we had some unique resources to consider, including um, Lincoln National Cemetery and the Meadowin Tall Grass Prairie Preserve. Uh, so we worked hard to identify these key issues with the stakeholders. Roger, George had a unique issue to work with. Maybe talk about that. Yeah, sure. So uh, as you all probably know, Hurricane Harvey, uh, like I said, dropped close to 60 inches of rain um, on southeast Texas in 2017. The flooding that was caused by that really crippled the region's freight infrastructure uh, for, for several weeks um, after the storm. Um, and that became really like a key, uh, a key consideration for the development of the freight plan, as well as really all their other regional planning efforts in terms of how to become more resilient. Um, so, so, you know, Beaumont basically became an island during this event. You, it could only really be supplied by air. And that, that proved to be very, very difficult in terms of delivering relief and, and, uh, uh, and things like that. So. Uh, one of the things that we're trying to do in the in the George's freight mobility plan is identify you know what the critical infrastructure is and then develop options to help restore capacity after um, after an event like that. And, and they're already implementing some things um, like improving drainage along I-10, which turned out to you know, not surprisingly is the is the most critical um, highway corridor going into and out of the region, uh, as well as 
maintaining dredging capacity for the ports to keep the channel open. Uh, a lot of sediment flowed into the channel after the, or during the storm, and that had to be cleared out before before trade could resume. And maybe looking at ITS options to uh, provide better travel information during these these types of event, events about what what routes are open and which ones are not. So Jackie, what about the key environmental and community issues for Charlotte? Yeah, so in, in Greater Charlotte, like I had kind of teased earlier, uh, one of the focuses of the plan was connecting to uh, economic development efforts and particularly supporting advanced manufacturing in the region. Um, so one of the issues was um, reconciling land use and freight, um, how that can be more community compatible while supporting um, the growth in the freight sector that was supporting advanced manufacturing. Um, of course, uh, with the increase you know of any of uh, truck traffic within any region you're going to get increased emissions so again just reconciling that through a tighter integration with land use um, into freight planning by uh, identifying uh, 22 uh, key freight corridors uh, within within the greater Charlotte area um, they also address conflicts with non-industrial and residential uh, land uses oops I think we move slides here oh, sorry my bad <laughs> all right just go back one. Yeah, so um, so there was also um, efforts made uh, to incorporate freight into site design standards and zoning codes to uh, reduce conflicts and, and make uh, freight and, and uh, community um, compatibility more in the in the forefront of freight planning and land use efforts. Um, and there was concern over greater emissions generated in more rural and agricultural environments as well as um, as those supply chains increased throughout the region. So identifying issues means working with stakeholders, all of the stakeholders, not just freight stakeholders. For Will County, we worked with diverse tools to reach stakeholders, including we had multiple large scale freight forums in the region. We had three public open houses in different parts of the county uh, to get input from different local communities. We had an environmental group outreach workshop with seven different environmental advocacy organizations with presence in the county to get their feedback. And we had a municipal local officials meetings talked with 20 different local governmental agencies uh, to get individual community input. And then Roger mentioned earlier things like our truck driver outreach and our surveys in the break room and we did specific surveys with freight industry stakeholders as well. Likewise, for the Jorts plan, outreach has included both roundtable meetings and public and private sector stakeholder interviews. Next slide. For Charlotte, there were several steps to stakeholder outreach. It was an extensive effort led by the plan development team that leaned heavily on the collaboration of several committees. The coordinated committees, representing our transportation planning organizations in the region, as well as NCDOT, SCDOT, and FHWA, did a phenomenal job of attending meetings, reviewing the technical memoranda, and incorporating input from each of these organizations. The steering committees represented a wide range of organizations and agencies, as well as companies throughout the region. Their participation included hearing updates on plan development, receiving highlights from the technical analysis, and participating in interactive work sessions to identify needs and opportunities for implementation of the plan's recommendations. The Freight Advisory Committee was a private sector focused group established as part of the freight plan development, but also to be participants in implementation and championing championing the freight plan's recommendations. A series of surveys were also conducted. So wide different techniques were used for each of these plans. Next slide. So yeah, how did we translate this into um, specific issues? Roger, maybe talk about the unique resiliency issue with jorts again. Yeah, yeah so another, another one way to think about resiliency is to look at the likely impacts of a shock to a key industry. Uh, and in this case, in the George region, it's petroleum refining and chemical manufacturing. So uh, if, if an event like a hurricane disabled the regional freight network here, 
uh, shipments of inbound crude and outbound refined products could effectively cease. And that would eliminate 14% of the regional workforce and 56% of its uh, economic output, as you can see on the bottom uh, line there in the table. Those impacts would ripple through the rest of the regional economy, including uh, you know, you know, manufacturing, uh, trade and transportation, and, and the service industries. So it turned out that petroleum products produced in this region supply about 5% of the domestic population, around 16 or 17 million people. Um, so you know, a shock to a, an industry like Hurricane Harvey or to this industry would lead to increased prices at the pump, and you might have noticed that um, after Hurricane Harvey, when, when gas prices did in fact shoot up for you know, temporarily. So after issues are identified, we had to work with the stakeholders to identify potential solutions and the mitigation measures. Although the Will County plan was developed by Will County along with the Economic Development Agency and the Workforce Investment Board, the adopters and implementers of many of the community mitigation activities would be the local governments. As a result, we took a toolbox approach, identifying potential tools that local stakeholders could use to address key community issues. And the table on your screen highlights a few categories and potential solutions. For example, the issue of trucks on local roads, and the salute, one of the measures to address was to designate truck routes in partnership with the local communities and better find ways to communicate perhaps at the countywide basis designated routes to truckers for noise impacts we talked about land use and zoning site plan standards that include requirements for buffer areas and noise standards and for things like encroachment on agricultural land a key issue we talked about local land use planning as well as county land use planning focusing strategies to essentially focus the new freight development into the identified freight clusters and zones to protect agricultural use next slide likewise we developed tools to address key environmental issues as you can see summarized on the screen for example air quality and having partnerships with industry to find technologies and implement technologies to address air quality for hazardous materials a key concern with that much freight transportation going through the region regularly reviewing and updating route designations for hazardous materials and the emergency management plans associated to make sure they're up to speed with where freight routing is occurring. And again, on the encroachment area, and I mentioned the county land use plan and strategy, but also reviewing truck routing to minimize impact so there are fewer truck routes through sensitive areas such as the uh, meadow and tall grass prairie. Now, Roger, Performance measures are another way that we can make sure that community and friendly and environmental features are considered in planning. Talk about how this was done for Southeast Texas. Yeah, sure. So um, in Southeast Texas, we, we developed performance measures for each freight plan goal uh, that was identified by the, by the stakeholders that, uh, that we talked to. And so key goal areas included things like economic competitiveness, freight mobility, uh, and safety, which you can see on the left-hand column in the table there. We also created performance targets that match up with what's in the Metropolitan Transportation Plan uh, where applicable uh, and are supported by, by quantitative data um, if available. Um, it's not on this slide, but environmental stewardship and quality of life were also important goals noted by, by stakeholders for this plan. So we included policy options like truck idling programs and truck route landscape and vegetation uh, options to, again, to help mitigate the negative impacts of, of goods movement. Uh, other important goals and metrics in Southeast Texas included um, state of good repair, as well as sustainable funding. And the overall approach here was to you know, support what was in the state freight plan and other regional planning documents, while also responding to the unique um, regional needs related to freight uh, in Southeast Texas. So likewise, Charlotte focused on performance measures around seven goals. Jackie, maybe tell us about this. 
Yeah, so um, the performance measures developed for Charlotte, like Chris said, were developed around the, the seven freight goals identified in the plan. Um, they were developed within the context of uh, the South Carolina statewide freight plan and the region's long range transportation plans as well and, and consistent with uh, the South Carolina statewide freight plan to, again, just ensure that uniformity, um, compliance with the state, um, compliance with uh, the FAST Act and MAP 21 performance measures. And really it was a tool that they focus on uh, to do plan development, plan implementation, and hold folks accountable to implementation of the action items and uh, strategies identified in the plan, um, specific to environmental stewardship. Uh, two of the uh, objectives of that goal area were to encourage land use planning that some more supports efficient freight movement and reduce emissions resulting from freight congestion. So the focus here on developing all of these performance measures was, is it measurable? Is it reliable? Um, can it be timely? Um, and, and is it realistic? So some of the performance measures chosen for the environmental category were things like um, MPO and RPO air quality design values, annual hours of excessive delay per capita, and two and four year um, emissions reductions for different criteria pollutants. Um, so very much focus on the data available, if you can track it and, and, and produce realistic goal setting to achieve those performance measures. For Will County, we developed performance measures around six goals, including community and economic development. The community impact measures are on the screen. At first glance, some of these appear to be transportation focused, but they are really about community impact. For example, the performance measure on designated truck route miles in residential and recreational area. The idea is that that would go down, not up over time. Likewise, when we look at percent of truck traffic volume traveling on non-designated truck routes, we would want that to also go down over time. And then just involving more jurisdictions, the local communities in developing comprehensive plans that integrate freight planning and land use decision making and keeping track of that count of number of plans, which hopefully goes up over time. Next slide. So in summary on our best practices regarding community and environmentally friendly freight planning, we would recommend mostly it's about working with stakeholders. Engage with even your contentious stakeholders, your environmental activist group, maybe your smaller local communities that are not having good experiences related to freight transportation. You'll want to leverage different tools. You saw all that we uh, talked about forums, surveys, uh, unique stakeholder meetings, public open houses. You want to understand the regional freight issues and tailor mitigation strategies to them. So particularly resiliency and the Jorts plan and how it was focused on that discussion versus um, Will County and agriculture and key community features and how mitigation focused on on those issues. Toolboxes are important because it's often not your immediate um, agency putting the plan together, but local jurisdictions that must implement it. So you want to provide them with tools and guidance. And measure performance, not just for moving goods and vehicles, but against environmental and community goals. So now Jackie is going to talk about best practices related to land use and freight, which builds on a specific community impact issue. Right. So the two plans that we'll focus on today for this uh, theme area is Will County and Greater Charlotte. So, you know, we've we've mentioned incorporating freight and land use several times throughout the presentation. So we wanted to give you a sense of what does that mean uh, for analysis and, and implementation in a plan. Um, here you see uh, a map of the Will County uh, freight clusters. And what we did here was basically a bottom up approach to identifying and evaluating what the freight land use clusters were in Will County. That involved uh, piecing together 
uh, all of the land use comp plans from the different municipalities. So every land use comp plan and what their projections were for land use in the future, whatever that horizon year was. So we kind of piece those together. We augmented that with a series of uh, land use data sets and including CoStar, which are for, if you're familiar with CoStar, that's essentially site data on, on development by type. So we could really drill down into the square footage of warehouse distribution, manufacturing, development and patterns within the county over time. And so we we, we um, essentially isolated those clusters, which had a certain amount of a rentable building area or square footage devoted to what we classified as freight related development. And that's just basically certain types of development, right? Manufacturing, industrial, warehouse distribution, that kind of stuff. We isolated um, those um, clusters in which there was um, a lot of either existing uh, concentrations of those freight related development or potential for uh, concentrations of freight related development depending on the zoning. So you'll see um, basically different classifications of these clusters. The freight super cluster in orange is really the areas where freight related development is booming. Um, whereas the blue and yellow clusters are really where it's emerging or potential. So we see a lot of potential growth um, for freight related development within those areas. And we tied this analysis really to how we prioritize and evaluate projects because we had to balance um, freight related development with um, the traditional sort of agricultural commodities that were also flowing within this region. So they did not want, you know, the entire county to be, um, you know, Amazon and Ikea warehouses. We wanted to provide them with some type of guidance on how to concentrate development and thereby concentrating um, freight related transportation investments around these key clusters. So next slide. We also did a, a forecast analysis for um, these land use clusters out to uh, 2026. So we kind of looked at the absorption rates of potential additional um, freight related development that could occur in these clusters. Uh, we combine this again with transurge data. So that's like sort of tying it to uh, trip generation rates with ATRI and transurge data and combining that with what the absorption rate could be for uh, basically anticipated freight related development within each cluster uh, and that helped us ground truth what we were putting together based on these local land use plans um, augment that again with some of this co-star data and also the an mc data set which um, if you're not familiar with mc it's uh, basically a workforce data set so it lets you look at the types of employment at a pretty disaggregate scale that's occurring within a, within a region so at, at the zip code level and ties that to future employment and we'll talk about workforce planning and, and how it relates to this but this is how we we identified those future clusters, how we projected out what the potential growth and freight development could be within certain areas of the county, and we ultimately tied this to how we evaluated and prioritized projects. Next. So this is the Greater Charlotte uh, freight cluster uh, land use exercise, which was equally as rigorous and more corridor-based rather than um, uh, cluster-based. So they identified 22 corridors that were um, freight significant um, that would support certain types of um, job sectors like advanced manufacturing. They identified 13 concentrations of freight-related development within uh, the region, again, focusing on that connection between freight mobility and corridors of significance for economic development, uh, paying particular importance to how, what corridors could support advanced manufacturing and support the um, exports of advanced manufacturing in the Southeast, since they are a hub for um, exports in the Southeast region. So uh, again, a lot of ground up analysis of what land use, freight related land use was occurring in the region, isolating that to particular corridors, and then further augmenting that with what type of industrial, or I'm sorry, uh, job type development was occurring in the region that would support key uh, manufacturing and advanced manufacturing um, job types. So in summary, uh, kind of the lessons learned or the best practices to incorporate into um, tying freight uh, land use and, and um, freight planning together is really you need to know 
what the planned and future freight related acreage is in the region. So, so some way to calculate um, what uh, land use is tied to industrial warehouse development types and in, in the geography that you're looking at and measuring that either for existing or future or, or hopefully both. Um, and you can overlay that with different freight concentrations and corridors. So looking at where that concentration of uh, transportation, freight related transportation assets that you have, um, you and then developing local strategies for freight concentrations in Will County. We did this by um, you know augmenting it with uh, surveys and uh, workforce forums with freight related businesses. Uh, we also um, in in Greater Charlotte identified strategies for economic development organizations to follow through in those corridors of significance. And then we prioritize freight investments that are already located in, in freight concentrations and corridors, uh, given that there is um, a, a direct connection between freight economy and, and transportation investment. And, and finally, in both uh, freight, in both Will County and Greater Charlotte, um, equipping local governments with ways to incorporate freight into site design standards. Um, obviously that could reduce land use conflicts between uh, industrial development and residential development, uh, sort of uh, reducing conflict between the community and, and freight. Thanks, Jackie. Um, so with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to Chris and he's gonna talk about project selection and funding for freight. So our team, we're running a little bit short on time, so we're going to move these slides really quickly. Um, but a key part of all of our freight plans was the approach to identifying and selecting future projects. Um, Southeast Texas is being implemented now, so we're going to focus on Will County and on Charlotte. For Will County, the project selection and prioritization was a core part of the plan, and the first step was identifying potential freight projects. Uh, this involved merging a lot of existing project lists at the regional, state, and county and local level. We tried to build on the county's LRTP, not redo it, um, and isolate freight-related projects tied to the freight clusters that Jackie discussed. And we did a lot of vetting with stakeholder input on our potential project list. Next slide. The next step is selecting criteria for greater Charlotte, um, they did uh, a list of projects, performed a gap analysis to identify missing projects, gaps in project lists, defined prioritization factors, and then analyzed each project and produced a summary assessment. For Will County, we built a tool and we focused evaluation factor, factors on several key goals, including preservation or enhancement of existing uh, transportation network, safety, mobility, economic competitiveness, being community and environmentally sensitive. Next slide. For Will County, we built a GIS-based customized project prioritization tool. And this was done in partnership with the county and the stakeholders. Um, with a GIS-based approach for a lot of factors, for example, safety, congestion, preservation, we had to develop criteria that line up with a spatial layer. For example, does a project address a known safety hotspot that could be mapped, or a roadway with a certain level of an asset management concern? We also had to look at the resources that essentially we wanted to avoid in developing freight focused projects. Uh, we built buffer zones around key environmentally sensitive features and incorporated that into the scoring or into almost a negative scoring for um, impacts to key environmental features. Uh, so we filtered all of the projects by different categories and stakeholder input was important. The stakeholders went through a detailed prioritization effort on the different stake on the different factors, uh, creating a weighting of factors that we used in the prioritization. Next slide. So Charlotte set up a framework for a prioritization and, and not a tool and the graphic on the scene shows uh, an example of, of this framework. Uh, the questions on the left present ways to evaluate whether or not a project is supportive of a freight related goal. And 
these could be evaluated against different data sources and with input from decision makers. This was not a numeric scoring process, but a graphical, more of a consumer reports type representation of how projects uh, would meet freight goals. And this provided a framework process for evaluating future freight needs and projects. Next slide. One of the key factors to prioritization is linking projects to funding. And this includes the consideration of whether a certain project is likely to receive funding for grants. This was very important for Will County. And so we considered factors like how well defined the project was and was it ready to move forward, the economic development benefit and cost, did it have community and political support? Were there multimodal aspects? We had a workforce element, so commuter aspects were part of this plan. And enhancement of community stability and ladders of opportunity. We also did some demonstration examples of how potential multi-source funding packages could fund a project. Note at that time we were still using the Tiger program instead of build, but we, for example, on this I-80 expansion project, identified funding around federal, state, regional, and local services and sources. And this was critical for Will County given the value of freight moved there for the region, state, and the nation. You saw that earlier graphic where we demonstrated how important projects were to even the national and international economy and therefore worthy of uh, you know, federal funding. Next slide. So as we get to some summaries of some key practices for project selection and funding, GIS tools can be a, a key asset and selecting a criteria that is spatially developed or can relate some spatial information to your selection criteria is important if you're gonna use a GIS based tool. Stakeholder input is critical. It plays into criteria of selection, what projects are evaluated, how they are weighted. Community, communicating prioritization related to the goals and performance measures, it's not just a score. It's not just 92 beats 91 necessarily, but what are the trade-offs even within the scoring? And Charlotte did that very well. And then evaluation of consideration of funding criteria, including grant funding to consider eligible projects that could move forward. And now Jackie is gonna briefly talk about freight workforce development. Yes, I will accelerate this. Um, so if there's any questions later, uh, please do let me know. Um, so I'm going to focus on really Will County's um, effort on, on workforce development, uh, although the Greater Charlotte uh, Regional Mobility Plan also focused on uh, target industry linkages, like, as I mentioned, working with those economic development agencies, uh, creating uh, recommendations to support advanced manufacturing. Uh, that was really a component of that uh, land use uh, freight ties. And for Will County, we collaborated with the Workforce Investment Board and the Center for Economic Development uh, to do a workforce action planning effort tied to their freight businesses. As we mentioned, there's just a uh, rapid development of freight-related development, all the Amazon, Ikea, warehouse-type development occurring in the region, and they were struggling, honestly, to um, figure out how to accommodate all the, that growth, both, both from a workforce pipeline perspective and a mobility perspective. How, how do, can our transportation system handle uh, those commute patterns in, out, uh, and through uh, the county to access these jobs? Uh, so we um, did a lot of data analysis, again, using some of the data sources we already referenced, um, and, and collaborated with uh, directly with the businesses, some of the universities that were focused on workforce development, um, and a lot of the sort of employment centers that were focused on connecting people people with uh, these freight related jobs and we, we held uh, um, uh, forums, uh, uh, several forums and, and surveys to get to know uh, their, their key issues that employers were facing um, and to help uh, strengthen that pipeline of, of freight, uh, freight workforce uh, to accommodate the increased growth. Next slide. So this just gives you a glimpse of some of the um, ways that we distilled some of the data and trends that were occurring with freight employment uh, in, in Will County. We looked at um, job growth expected in the future where we, we saw a 33% expected job growth. They had already experienced about 138% growth over the past um, 
15 years, um, which gives you a sense of, again, there's the shifting economies in the county. Um, and we, we did an analysis of how many private sector jobs in the county are really freight dependent, you know, resulting in about 57%. Um, there was obviously some wage growth and retention issues um, where, um, you know, 40% of the jobs were paid over $15 an hour, but focusing on, you know, providing good quality jobs and, and, and not just, um, you know, maybe seasonal or temporary jobs was a concern of of particularly the uh, public sector officials. And finally, we looked at commute patterns. So not just you know, how many folks are coming into the county to, to access these jobs, but what routes are they using? What, what um, suburban, pay, uh, suburban bus corridors are they using? Can we augment those corridors to offset the um, you know, AM, PM peak uh, hours that, they, that might be uh, causing increased uh, congestion on the roadways? Next slide. And then this is our action plan. So you see we essentially created six uh, action strategies or um, uh, components of the, of the action plan um, that we had a whole chapter on in the freight plan. And this was really targeted towards private sector industry to coalesce around these six action strategies. So this is not something that Will County or the municipalities would lead. This was really uh, geared towards uh, the Center for Economic Development and its partners, its private sector partners um, and freight related. Uh, partners to coalesce around these action strategies to build a stronger pipeline of freight workforce uh, to support uh, the uh, increasing development in the county. Um, again, it's about supporting the economic base of the county. 57% of the jobs, again, were related to freight workforce, but also ensuring that these jobs were quality jobs and that they uh, you know, would be seeing that sort of sustained growth in the future. Yeah, thanks, Jackie. Um, I'm just going to offer a real uh, brief summary of the top takeaways, and then I'll uh, pass it over to Kenneth. So, you know, good freight planning starts with good freight data. Uh, so it's crucial to use the appropriate data sources to convey this complex information in a way that's understandable, relatable, and, and appropriately makes the case for freight investments. Stakeholder input is also critical to understanding community needs and concerns, and, and also to ground truth the analytical results that you're getting. Um, when you definitively link cargo movement to the economy, it builds a much stronger case for investment, especially if you're going after discretionary funds like build and infra grants. And although good, goods movement is critical to prosperity, we recognize that uh, it's important to mitigate the negative externalities associated with it. And finally, using local data sources and adapting regional and national data sources to the local context allows for, for better performance-driven planning. So that concludes my presentation. I'm going to give it give it over to uh, Kenneth now. Okay, Kenneth, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you all very much for this opportunity. <laughs> um, as I was listening, I just wanted to uh, recognize the fact that. Uh, of course, uh, for the Triangle Regional Freight Plan, which I'm going to share with you, a lot of what uh, had been covered uh, by our three presenters, we uh, shared similar methodologies in our area. Uh, the thing that I wish to share with you also is that in context with us doing our regional freight plan, uh, Charlotte was doing their freight plan about the same time, along with uh, the metropolitan area of Greensboro, Winston-Salem, and High Point. Just to give you background with regard to uh, the state of North Carolina, uh, the Charlotte uh, area, the Triangle region, as well as the Triad region, uh, as I just briefly mentioned, are your really your three uh, major economic engines uh, for the state of North Carolina. And so for our experience uh, at this particular time, we, although we're, the, we're one of the engines, we had not had the story told of freight uh, in our area, how uh, the distribution centers, how it's uh, freight activity in our area. And so uh, our metropolitan planning organization, which is called the North Carolina Capital Area Metropolitan Planning Organization, along with the Department of Transportation and our neighboring MPO called the Durham Chapel Hill Carborough MPO, partnered together to do, uh, to create this triangle regional freight plan. 
And uh, with the help of uh, WSP, uh, we uh, have done this plan. And of course, it was approved uh, as of uh, last calendar year. Just like trying to advance it, just a moment. You might want to try right clicking with your mouse. Sometimes that first slide sticks. Okay. Right click and next. And you should be good to yeah. go then after that. Okay. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> basically, just to give you background, we had to tell the story as it, as it says, uh, basically conducting a comprehensive regional study and develop a framework to address mobility needs in our region and uh, examine all point all modes of freight uh, the stronger emphasis being of course on trucks uh, we do of course have rail and air cargo but uh, truck is the majority carrier uh, in our particular area and we also wanted to uh, establish policies and uh, guide investment to address those needs of uh, the industry in our area so that we can have a sustainable uh, economy that uh, uh, it meet various regional goals, of course, for a safe economy uh, with equity, livability, and economic productivity. We did a lot of similar facets that had been utilized in the previous uh, presentation. We want to quickly highlight and note we did create a stakeholder outreach and engagement one of the things that is a standing uh, committee within our MPO is what is called the Regional Freight Stakeholder Advisory Council. And basically that's an ad hoc uh, agency or entity that includes largely our private sector uh, carriers and providers, and they give input significantly on uh, future projects and what are the needs of the region. One of the things that we've really found and, and recognized with regard to uh, particularly our uh, freight carriers is that, of, of course, things for them, when we're looking at a long-term plan, uh, they look at things from a short-term standpoint. So uh, long-term to them may be a week, whereas for us, of course, it's many years. And of course, we stepped through the various uh, products that we wanted to, uh, created uh, from the plan uh, one of the things I just wanted to show you and highlight over to your over to the right, the information that's provided was created by Amazon in cooperation with Procter and Gamble. What they or what we wanted to emphasize is is that uh, last year prior to Thanksgiving, uh, both Procter and Gamble and Gamble and Amazon partnered to uh, encourage shoppers to uh, note that they don't have to worry about the, going to congested malls or shopping centers. Everything can be done online. We have the network established, not only in our area, but other parts of the country where you can get your goods in a timely fashion, whether within two hours, or whether within a day. And the point that we wanted to bring forward is, is that freight is very meaningful. And that's something that uh, whether you do your plan for the first time, which we've done, or this is your second, third, or fourth time, there needs to be a reminder that freight is very significant to not only to the economy, but to uh, our, our, our way of life, your way of life in terms of uh, how we uh, uh, move and have our being uh, here. One of the things that we really noted in telling the story is how are we freight dependent? Uh, Charlotte has a large number of intermodal centers along with the uh, area of Greensboro. We don't have the significant amount of intermodal centers that they have. However, we recognize that freight dependent industries account for a third of the Triangle Gross Regional product. Uh, as you uh, probably have been reading or noting, uh, the Triangle is one of the faster uh, growing areas of the state, uh, recognized as one of the uh, more livable uh, areas of the, uh, one of the fastest growing areas of the state and country, one of the more livable areas of the state and country. And so we needed to see 
what uh, is making our economy um, uh, effective and uh, and diverse. And so uh, we see that freight is very important in our uh, region. Uh, one of the things we wanted to do in noting from the previous uh, exercise is that we wanted to make sure that it's safe and efficient. Uh, we wanted to ensure intermodal connectivity, economic competitiveness, of course, jobs, uh, innovation, and reducing environmental impacts. I won't address that any more than, than necessary due to the fact that, of course, it was covered in the previous uh, presentation. And again, uh, you see uh, the similar natures of uh, these freight plans and how it's important uh, for all communities that want to address this, how they uh, view and what type of goals that the community want to uh, reach. And of course, we see the various goals here. This is translated, basically the highlighted or the uh, items in bold, such as managed congestion system reliability and uh, all the way to ensure equity are the goals of our MPO. Uh, and when I say our MPO, let me include and state this includes the Durham Chapel Hill Carborough MPO as well because we do a joint uh, metropolitan transportation plan. And what occurred from this exercise was uh, where they created from our goals the items that are in the uh, less bold font or in the regular font are basically translated into freight ease, if you want to call it that way. So basically what you're seeing is, for example, managed congestion, of course, simply allow glue, uh, goods to move with minimal congestion and time delay and greater predictability. And we can go into that into further detail as I show you with regard to the maps. Uh, the equity piece that's uh, very important here is something that when we put out the RFP, uh, one of our neighboring MPO wanted to ensure that we address that component of equity to ensure that whatever is done does not create a disproportionate burden on particularly uh, minority in, uh, and low income uh, communities. So that's uh, one of the components we really want to, to address. This is very significant, even though it's 2012 numbers, as I mentioned before, uh, the region handled over or close to 80 million, 82 million tons of freight, uh, mainly by truck. Uh, air is important, and all the other modes are important. Of course, we're inland, but uh, and, and rail is important, but the majority, of course, of, of things are uh, really handled uh, by truck, whether the origin or the terminal point. And so we wanted to basically note that to all those who were engaged, particularly the stakeholders, to note the, the value and the flow of truck traffic in our, in our region. And this map shows you, in general, the Triangle region, uh, with Wake County, of course, being in the center, uh, Raleigh the capital, uh, of course, Durham to the west, and uh, the, uh, the, uh, the counties, of course, that surround our area, our core counties, uh, it shows you the uh, significant outbound movement of freight. Uh, of course, noting just in this general area between the Wake and Durham County is the Research Triangle Park and their various distribution centers, not only around the park, but around the county, there's a lot of uh, economic activity uh, flowing through this area, to this area, and from this area. But of course, with Wake County being uh, over a million in population, uh, the general flow is uh, outbound through uh, Wake County. This largely shows the uh, tons of and commodities that uh, are uh, flow through our area, particularly uh, if you look at the top with regard to uh, gravel, uh, wood products, and things of this particular nature, one of the things that shows you is that this area is really, really a growing area. It's a fast growing area. So a lot of uh, items of that particular nature are uh, uh, flow to, particularly to this area to support the growth that's uh, really occurring. Uh, of course, that's the amount of tonnage. And of course, we see uh, the value of the particular freight 
And we know, particularly with regard to pharmaceuticals, taking into account uh, the pharmaceutical industry that we do have in this region, uh, there's a lot of uh, outflow uh, from uh, the pharmaceutical industry uh, from our area to other parts of the, of the country and world. And this shows you the destinations. Of course, we have tremendous inflow within the state of North Carolina, but uh, just want to show for those, for our, uh, my Ohio brethren, of course, a lot of that, of uh, what we uh, send goes to Ohio, noting that you all have a lot of uh, automobile plants in that area. Of course, Austin, Texas, where uh, sort of uh, uh, the Triangle and uh, Austin have a lot in common with regard to high technology, um, uh, major research universities, as well as to uh, the greater Los Angeles basin uh, with regard uh, to some activities involving the, that community as well. So uh, we are very significant in terms of the movement of uh, freight, both incoming and uh, outgoing uh, freight opportunities. This just gives you a highlight of the uh, regional rail system. Uh, with, of course, uh, CSX and Norfolk Southern uh, carrying a, a large amount of, the, of that freight uh, through our region. Uh, we note here, with regard to intermodal service uh, that occurs with Norfolk Southern and Greensboro, Greensboro is to the uh, left here, as I'm looking at it from the screen. We just broke ground on a CSX intermodal hub that will be built in this portion of the state in uh, Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, and that will be a significant carrier of uh, freight and uh, intermodal activity uh, for, from this part of the state to other parts of the, of, of the country. Of course, the nearest port to us, there, of course, there is Wilmington, but the major ports for us, of course, include uh, Norfolk, um, Savannah, Charleston, uh, Baltimore, and others on the eastern seaboard. This basically shows you the, where the maritime shipments are uh, uh, coming from and leaving. And we have a significant amount of traffic in particular, in particular to going out that leave here going to Norfolk. That is our uh, major deep water port, which is about three and a half, four hours away. And then, of course, uh, Savannah and, and others are less uh, significant, but uh, still valuable. Someone from Davey. I just saw your email come through. Okay. Um, let me go quickly. And one of the things that we did with regard to finding out from our uh, suppliers, looking at uh, Multi, looking at the uh, multiple uh, chain uh, supply chain strategies for our area, uh, an analysis was done in conjunction with Thompson International to determine uh, what needs to be done to improve uh, the supply chain strategies here in our uh, in our area. And the general out, uh, outcry or uh, desire has been to accelerate automation. And so that's why uh, that's really significant with regard to our area. And so that uh, piece is really going to be stepped up for uh, the freight suppliers in our uh, region. And this basically just gives a highlight. Uh, these two slides define uh, the manufacturing facility types here in our, in our area. Uh, one being electronics and machinery in particular, as well as the warehouse distribution types. And we have a significant amount of distribution centers uh, within our region. Let me quickly move. Uh, just real quickly, just want to share with you, this is our general uh, freight intensity clusters, as I just mentioned, uh, largely around Research Triangle Park, Raleigh-Durham International Airport, is where a lot of activity is occurring. And then there are clusters currently around this, uh, all portions of the uh, 
uh, greater uh, triangle area. One of the things that we're looking at, of course, is um, the significance of uh, truck delivery uh, service in our area. We see that same day has significantly increased. And one of the things that I want to, to note is, is that uh, in our area, we are adding more distribution centers as it stands. Uh, in fact, Amazon is has added at least one more distribution center in the town of Garner. And so you're going to see that uh, 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 continue to accelerate. This just gives a highlight of buffer time index with regard to truck buffer time. Largely, if you were to look in this general area, uh, this of course is, now I wouldn't call it the center of the region, but of course this is the city of Raleigh in particular, where a lot of growths occurred. A lot of this basically follows where our highest congestion is located in our, our region. And so uh, these are some things that we noted with regard to uh, the movement of truck traffic on our uh, major facilities. And of course, we see that with regard to uh, the amount of network uh, buffer time, what, uh, what has occurred, particularly uh, uh, in 2014, uh, 2015, of course, we see the various peaks, uh, particularly the morning peak, and uh, very heavily uh, noted uh, in early 15. And then, of course, it would swing to uh, a, a different type of uh, significant buffer time during the uh, summer months. So it fluctuated sort of by seasons, but uh, we had a tremendous amount of fluctuation with regard to um, how trucks moved uh, through our region in light of the activity that was occurring through the, throughout the seasons. Uh, very quickly, just want to show you the amount of uh, the tonnage that is generated in terms of uh, uh, in terms of freight. <clears throat> excuse me, in our region, noting that uh, truck, of course, generates. Uh, the highest amount of tonnage, both both in tonnage and in value. And there was another uh, file I want to show here very quickly. Uh, I'll get to that in just a moment. Let me go further down. Uh, this is what I wanted to show you. You see that uh, with regard to nonmetals, of course, there's higher tonnage in terms of uh, what is being shipped out and then what's uh, the value of that ton of tonnage in terms of pharmaceuticals is greatest in our region in light of the what we uh, uh, produce in terms of product. Based on what we have been able to gather in terms of uh, data, uh, we, beginning with this map here, we've of course uh, forecasted the, on the network the amount of truck traffic that is generated, we then in turn created, uh, and I'm going to go very quickly from test sites to next. Let me see if I can do this. How much time do I have very quickly? Just about five minutes, I think. Five minutes, okay, yeah, I was concerned about that. Let me just get to the uh, strategic freight corridors that have been uh, looked at. One of the things that we did in light of noting the truck traffic, in light of noting where our freight clusters are, we created a strategic freight corridor. This was reviewed by all of our major players in the region. And of course you see the major freeways and major arterials where uh, these corridors, uh, where these corridors are. Uh, from that, we created tier two, uh, three tiers of uh, stri uh, strategic freight corridors. Of course, the trade routes basically does it radiate out going to points such as Norfolk, Wilmington, the distribution centers, which are largely regional throughout the state, and then the critical access routes that are local. We have in the current plan over $7.2 billion of projects that incorporate all these different uh, uh, various routes. And we are including 
a lot of these projects within what is called our um, spot or strategic transportation initiative that we and Charlotte and other communities work on together in terms of putting together our transportation improvement plan. This shows you uh, the 66 recommended freight projects, of course, improvements on uh, our arterials, as well as our interstate uh, facilities, uh, particularly noting one of them will be a toll road, which, is, which will be under construction uh, very soon. Uh, say very quickly, uh, we just basically highlights the general principle strategies. And one of the last thing I just wanted to quickly share with you, we're doing a Southwest area study where we're looking at how to uh, move a, an existing CSX rail yard to another potential uh, location uh, right adjacent to, into the county just to the west. There is a proposed mega site, and we're looking to see how we can incorporate or blend that uh, site in with the future mega site. Uh, thank you all for this opportunity. I appreciate uh, sharing this uh, uh, forum with you all, and uh, I guess we can take questions now. Thank you. Um, I I think, well, we can do one question, I think, before we close up shop. Um, so we'll just kind of do that. And I don't want to get too too far into questions um, just because we only have a, a minute left. Um, this question was towards the beginning-ish, I guess, of the presentation. Could you speak more about the uh, allocating truck route maintenance costs to the individual freight haulers? So I think that's our CDM Smith folks. If one of you want to take that. I'm, I'm not sure any of the the plans that we uh, highlighted specifically addressed that. Um, you know, you, they, they, they do pay fuel taxes, obviously, which are very big for a, um, for a trucking firm. Uh, that's a considerable expense for them, and that does go towards, uh, you know, the, the road maintenance. But in terms of allocating to specific corridors, I'm not sure we uh, necessarily looked at that. I don't know, Chris, do you have any further thoughts on that? No, I don't think that was a focus in, in Will County. I think certainly that is a sentiment that came up at some um, meetings, but I think there was a greater focus on relationships to land use and the costs of the facilities that generate um, the truck traffic rather than immediately to the freight haulers. Yeah. And one thing you can do if, if when you identify like a strategic freight network in your re region, you can make sure that it uh, it meets more rigorous design standards uh, like thicker pavements, uh, larger turning radii, things like that, uh, just to make sure that those routes are both truck friendly and can also stand up to the, the beating they're going to take from this heavy traffic. Okay, one question was it? It's 2.30. Uh, we got to wrap up. So this was really great. This was a ton of information. And we're going to have a recording of this session available on our YouTube channel. Just search Planning Webcast on YouTube. We'll also, um, well, I'll have a PDF uh, version of, of both of these presentations uh, together up on our webcast webpage here shortly so that you can download a PDF copy um, and take a look further and uh, I'll get that up shortly. Um, and I just wanted to add so, in one other thing. Oh, uh, sure. If you can, this is uh, Jackie. So just take note too, if you have additional questions of our emails on the screen here, I know we don't have a ton of time for questions today, but uh, please do feel free to email us, um, you know, any one of us on the screen, if you do have other questions and we'll be sure to follow up. Thank you. That's exactly what I was going to say. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, so <laughs> that's perfect. Thank you. Um, so thanks everyone for joining us again. Don't forget to log those CM credits 1.5 available. Um, and, and thank you to the Transportation Planning Division for sponsoring today's webcast. We appreciate you. And Chris, Jackie, uh, Roger, Ken, thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, like Jackie said, 
head over and, and email them or give them a, a buzz if you have any uh, questions. Thanks, everyone. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.